Hello and welcome to this podcast entitled Imagination and Numbers, an inquiry into strategies for the implementation of creativity in primary school mathematics. As an epigraph to this podcast, we have a quote from Mike Ollerton in his book, Getting the Buggers to Add Up. Ollerton wrote, quote, Mathematics is more than a list of content knowledge to be learned in bite-sized pieces. It is a beautiful, intriguing, and mind-blowing subject which can encourage learners to engage in deep, independent, and shared thinking, end quote. The first thing we're going to look at is how maths has been traditionally taught in primary school classrooms. It begs to reason that before we can look at where we want to go into the future, we must look to the past to see where we've been. Primary school maths has hitherto been taught according to traditionalist, rote, banking model styles of education. Educational textbooks and policies tend to present mathematics as though it were a pure, omnipotent, and monolithic body of knowledge, almost an expression of unadulterated and unyielding human rationality. This prejudiced and ahistorical viewpoint has serious educational consequences, because there is a straight line of continuity between epistemology and pedagogy. If math knowledge is perfect and pure, then the job of the learner isn't to question, explore, or create, but simply to obediently memorize. The learner is a passive participant in the education process because they are being told to blindly and thoughtlessly accept the math content material as true. Our current education system has an unhealthy obsession with test taking, and these tests are designed to be narrow and one-dimensional. Simplistic questions, simple answers, and marking is merely the act of giving a response of right or wrong. Teachers have no alternative but to implement a style of teaching which coincides and conforms to the way that the tests are designed, After all, teachers have the professional responsibility to do everything within their means to ensure their students do well in those tests, and that means teaching for test preparation. Taking these tests involves following a procedure. You read a question, identify the type of question, know the corresponding algorithm, put in the question variable data, process the algorithm, and write down the answer. In other words, the tests are driven by the desire for procedural application. Because of this, teaching must necessarily revolve around the instruction and cataloguing of mathematical procedures that the students will be tasked with completing the students have explained to them that each question has a single corresponding procedure to get the correct answer, which must be followed without digression. When taking these tests, the students are called upon to simply follow the correct procedure. The tests will contain many questions on each topic, which means that students are forced to repeat the same procedure over and over and over again. Mathematics has the reputation among school students of being a boring and mystifying subject, one that destroys the human soul through its cold rigidity and perfect canonized procedures. Students are more likely to hate maths, while the idea of them adoring it is nothing but a utopia. From my professional perspective, This reputation seems entirely appropriate. If maths is going to continue to be taught in this manner, as it currently is, then it deserves all the hatred and disgust that it gets from students.
For the specific purposes of this podcast, we asked ourselves this question. How can primary school mathematics be taught in order to develop, facilitate, and encourage the student's creativity? The first step is to define what creativity is. First, Bolden et al. described creativity as, quote, a personal activity intended to produce something new, end quote. This sentiment is concurred by Sambo and Ibrahim. Second, the National Advisory Committee on the Creative and Cultural Education gives a twofold criteria for creativity. It must be an, quote, imaginative activity fashioned so as to produce outcomes that are both original and of value. When we speak about creating new content, this is not meant in the historical sense, in the same way that Einstein created something new in physics, or Stephen Jay Gould created something new in biology. We're not expecting primary school students to create brand new mathematical content and ideas. Rather, mathematical content is to be defined as new when it's original, novel, and innovative from the point of view of the learner themselves. If the student discovers and learns something today that they didn't know yesterday, they have created some new knowledge. Our literature review provided us with mixed results. Many of the articles were built on research surveys, so we were able to collect plenty of information about teacher and student attitudes towards mathematics in primary schools. The important step that education academia has taken is an appreciation for the existence of the problem stated above. Scholars are aware that there is a deep, deep problem in current education in mathematics. On the one hand, mathematical science understands that creativity, unorthodox thinking, and creating new ideas are a crucial component for the continuation of their science. But on the other hand, in primary school classrooms, maths is boring, rigid, and uninteresting, and all you do is just follow the rules that have already been set out for you. In terms of our intended goal, which is to find out pedagogical insights into maths for practical implementation of creativity in the classroom, we came out with almost entirely nothing. No one has serious answers as to how current practices might be reformed, transformed or improved so to change maths in primary schools from being a subject of obedience, repetition and monotony to one of imagination, beauty and discovery. In short, the problem has been diagnosed correctly, but no one seems to have a prescription as to what should be done to resolve it. We do have someone who has attempted to define what mathematical creativity in primary school mathematics is. Bolden et al. write that, quote, the ability to break free from established mindsets, to see possibilities beyond and to apply a broad range of mathematical knowledge in seeing opportunities is creativity. There is a wide agreement, however, that problem solving is one field of maths where creativity can be given center stage. In these environments, the procedures, algorithms, and content knowledge 
are not viewed as omnipotent and unyielding canon, but rather as flexible and, out and adaptable tools of computation. Students are given a puzzle where the solution, i.e. the procedure for completion, is not obvious and immediate. So they must rationally analyse what the task is, perhaps thinking in an unorthodox way, and then to use their tools in experimental manners in order to discover what the solution is. In this way, problem solving could indeed be a way of developing and encouraging student creativity. A lot of the literature we looked at explored why creativity is being hindered and stifled inside primary school classrooms. As students become naturalised into the classrooms, they become inculcated with the prejudicial values of our national education system. That is to say, getting the wrong answer is the worst possible thing to do. This dom dominant mainstream ritual of shaming incorrect answers will destroy the student's willingness to take risks with their subject matter, the latter of which is the first step on the road towards discovering new ideas and materials, i.e. being creative. In short, as students come to understand that avoiding getting the wrong answers is paramount to their survival, their source of creativity is cut off and lost. Sambo and Ibrahim argue that students, quote, seem to possess the seeds of creativeness, but the environment fails to provide the proper nourishment for growth, end quote. If the national education system cannot be reshaped to express more enlightened values, at least individual classrooms can be purged of this prejudice against wrong answers and the tendency towards shaming. Sambo and Ibrahim encourage teachers to avoid the instinctive tendency of immediately shutting down and disapproving of wrong answers. Judgment on the efficacy of students' answers must be deferred. Quote, so that many ideas are generated without any immediate attempt to evaluate or at finding an immediate solution to the problem." End quote. Our inquiry seeks to fill in the incumbent gap in the academic literature. We wish to uncover and document the methodology for practical application of creativity within primary school classrooms. Our task is to organise, codify and formulate these ideas together into a coherent school of thought. In other words, to create a unified theory of mathematical creativity. The next step is to investigate practical application of these theories and principles into an actual primary school maths classroom we need to look at the entire spectrum of education in action. Curricula, syllabi, school policy, lesson plans, and teaching strategies. Our goal is to uncover and systematically organize the best methods of teaching that facilitate, encourage, and foster the creativity within primary school mathematics. These must be assembled and catalogued together thereby creating a comprehensive guidebook for teachers and schools. As an appendix for this podcast, we would like to mention that we have uncovered some interesting material about the, ma the mathematical philosopher Imre Lakatos, who wrote, who broke new ground in the field of, in the 1950s when he challenged many of the preconceptions relating to the nature of mathematics. Alan Whitecomb summarises Lakatos' ideas. Quote, Mathematics is what mathematicians do. The activity is the essence of the thing. Mathematics belongs at the centre of the human experience, 
a product of human activity. Creativity and imagination in mathematics are of paramount importance. In large part, mathematics is all the product of human imagination. I think we have to stimulate the creative minds of children with ideas and not bore them to half to death with dull as ditch water algorithms. Open a textbook on almost any branch of mathematics today and it is full of arcane and esoteric vocabulary and symbolism. We are highly intrigued and impressed by Lakatos and his ideas about mathematics and we definitely recommend a more in-depth exploration of his ideas in any investigation in this practice topic in the future.